Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Happy to see you. Oh, looks like my head's chopped off. Hold on. Let me, let me go. Let me go fix that a little bit. One moment. Really? Okay. All right. All right. I'll go back. Maybe it's just the way I have my, my scroll. Okay, whatever. Move, move it back. No, no adjustments necessary. <laughs> Took some time out of the StitchCon convention that I'm at to check in and say, well, hello, Miss Allison. Good afternoon to you. Well, good morning to you. It's actually. So wherever you may be. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Every single one of you is. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we are gonna plug away at two totes one very easy tote and one a little bit more complicated just to kind of dip your toes in the totes hope everybody's having a fantastic weekend happy father's day to all the fathers and all the moms who act as fathers because that was what my mom did so she was my mom and my dad so hello lona hello james i do got your package Mm -hmm. Buffing and retired your vision. Well, you, you, I know you got family, Miss Gwenny, and you enjoy that family. I'm so excited. I saw on the news or the little news clip that on Canada Day, Pop and I's 26th wedding anniversary, which is July 1st, uh, you guys will be coming out of your restrictions in Alberta. So I'm very excited for you. Hello, Georgina. I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Pop is a little tired. Munchkin's got a headache. You know, only can do what I can do. Uh, I'm going to go out after stream and drive almost an hour <laughs> to go get one of Pop's favorite fried chickens and bring it home. So that's my, besides making a breakfast this morning and going to get breakfast tomorrow morning, that's my contribution. So for, for happy Father's Day. Well, and that I love him and I enjoy him. So, mm, Joyce from Alabama. Hello, hello, hello. How is Alabama today? Hello, Miss Claudette. Hello, Miss Sass. Hello, Miss Catwell. Or Catwell, sorry. I never want to presume. Hello, Paula. Hello, Deanne. Hello, Chris and Cheryl and Connie Joe and Robin and June and Lona, of course. Hello, hello, hello. And Charlotte. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone, she says. She's waving. I could tell. I could tell she's waving. <laughs> and Miss Lois and Donna Faye. Hello, hello. And Deanne Palmer. There we go. Thank you, thank you very much. Judy Lane from Elba, Elba, Alabama. Oh my God, you almost have to think about that before you say that there, there, Judy. Elba, Alabama. <laughs> it's not so easy for us Canadians to wrap around. <laughs> uh, Joan, oh, oh, oh really? You have, Miss Lois? What you been doing? Organizing all your stoof? Oh, your stoof, exactly. Hello, Carolyn from Illinois. Big heart to you too, girlfriend. Mm -mm, big hugs, I'm feeling the love. Hello, Miss Ann. Sorry, I was, I was, I was kind of bugging her. I was like, I haven't seen you in a while. You're okay. <laughs> I, always, I always feel weird like a stalker when I'm... <laughs> it's like, hey, I, I watched this YouTuber and now she's stalking me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just concerned. That's all. That's all. Hello, Carol. Hello, Linda. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, Zella. Hello, donors. Um, ta nurse. Good morning. <laughs> I'll be listening. We'll probably be not chatting, but that's okay. I'm happy to see you here. Happy to have you here. Happy, happy, happy. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. I know, but I did feel a little stalkerish. <laughs> I did. You got a package yesterday? Yay! You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm, I'm waiting for Miss Heli to get hers. That's the last of our moderators to get their package. So I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Hello, Kay. Hello, Tracy. Hello, Jessica and Jennifer. And there's Miss Heli. Hello, hello, hello. Big hugs to you. I assume you haven't got your package yet. I know Ms. Uh, yours and Lois went out at the same time. So um, I figured because... It has farther to swim and might take at least another week, <laughs> depending on whether it's doing the doggy paddle or a full-on breaststroke. Just saying. 
Uh, open my bag. Okay, I will, I will, I will. Let me just let me just talk about what we have going on here for our uh, Country Garden English Paper Piecing, which is done by Hexadoodle Quilts. If you click on the link that somebody will put in there, you can get a chance to come and sew along and stitch along with us in our project. This is part of the pansies that I finished up, so that is the center one. And then I had six of the small ones to do. I have done three so far, just to know, let you know I have made some progress on it. And uh, and, and, it's, and it's looking absolutely lovely. I'm loving the, the textured fabrics that I've chosen for that. So that is the fifth one we're working on. This one is the first. It is the poppies, okay? Second one is the tick seed, okay? And what I've done is I've done a base stitch. You can see like I've got this fabric kind of stitched across here. So I'm just doing that as a base stitch, okay? And then, oh, sorry, got two for here. And then this one was the forget-me-nots, which was month number three. And then month number four was the marigolds, which I have already to go here. And of course, this is gonna be a quilt as you go. So I've just done the base stitches and I wanna be able to hand quilt all the way around this, giving myself the time. Like I'm gonna be doing some camping with a girlfriend. I'm sure she's gonna want me to go all hiking and nature stuff, but I'm gonna be like, I just wanna hand stitch some blocks. <laughs> in nature. So I'm going to take a few along with me when I go camping uh, and, uh, and, and, and just work on them that way. So that's my four. I've made a great amount of progress. I'm very happy with it so far. It's a uh, flowered background here on the white and then just a very, it's the um, like the linen stabilizing fabric or foundation fabric I've been using for um, all, the, all my little blocks and for the dreads and stuff like that on the back. So it's, it's just going to be a wall hanging for me. So I didn't want to put anything too, too fancy. That's for sure. There we go. So yeah, just wanted to keep you up to date. This is what I've been doing so far. So yay. Thank you. Thank you. And, and thank you to anybody who's coming to sew along with me. And ch cheers to you. Hot cup of Earl Grey. I didn't even get my tea bag out yet. Let me go do that right now. Always got to give the bag a squeeze. There we go. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers. I will, James. I will, James. Pop, Pop does open stuff before I get to it, though, just so you know, okay? <laughs> okay, it's right here. Now, this is from James. Okay, Pop just left it open. Okay. All right. Put that down there because I, oh, look at those beautiful colors. Oh my goodness. I love the batiks. Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at that pretty little pattern of the flower. Hmm. I love it. Ooh. Oh, and green. Oh, green Velcro. I've never seen green Velcro before. I love it. I love it. Look at all these pockets. I could put my crochet hooks. Oh, 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 there's something in there. Dear Laurel and Mom, I made this travel case just for you and hope. Oh, you're going to make me cry. I'm a big sap. I'm sorry. You will enjoy all the colors and get a lot out of this for your quilting things. I enjoy watching you guys on Saturday on YouTube. Your friend James. Aww. I'm sorry, I'm a big blubber face. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. I love it, James. Oh, look at all the stuff I can put in there. Oh my God, I'm taking this camping with me. I'm taking a camping. Oh, thank. Now I'm gonna need a Kleenex. <laughs> thank you, James. That's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I love it. You did a good job. Look at those seams. Look at those quarter inch all the way around. I bet you measured that, baby. It's on there. I don't know. I don't, I'm sorry. I need a Kleenex. Give me a moment. <laughs> Thank you, James. I'm sorry, I'm a big blubbery face. Oh, I didn't know you were gonna go with that. <laughs> I 
I know you don't want to hear me snot all over the place either. I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you, James. I'm so touched. That was really, really nice of you. Thank you, thank you. Big blubbery face. I'm sorry. <laughs> Takes three fat quarters, a little Velcro, and a little batting. It is gorgeous. You can fit a lot in here. You can fit a little tablet. You can put your phone and something else. And then you got all these other little pockets to put like crochet hooks and little snips and even like a package of like needles or anything like that. Like seriously, this is so awesome. I love the colors. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Ugh. That was very, very kind of you. Very kind of you. And I'm serious. I'm taking this camping so I can protect some of my stuff that I'm going to be working on. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh yeah. And a lot of love went into this too. Exactly. I use mine at home all the time for cold. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Hello, Heather. I know. Isn't it adorable? James made that for us. Well, for me, really. Because it's not like it's Pops colors. <laughs> Unless it's the green. Isn't that gorgeous? I absolutely love it. Absolutely. Look at all the pockets. Like, you got eight pockets right here. And then this huge one there. You can put all sorts of things in there. You can put like a little pattern, all your little crochet hooks, you know, like seriously, there's oh, so much. I, I'm such a fart. I'm, no, I'm sorry, Lona. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. You'd have to ask Mr. James there, Dolores. Is there a pattern? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mwah. Thank you. Thank you. Big hearts to you. Thank you. Thank you. That's adorable. All right. No more, no more sad eyes. <laughs> Or, or saggy eyes, not sad eyes, saggy eyes. All right, there we go. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Zaz lives, a lot, a wall. yeah, she does love the green Velcro, doesn't she, Sylvia? <laughs> Aw, thank you, thank you, thank you. He did a great job, didn't he, Sheila? Fantastic, fantastic. I know, wonderful job, didn't he, Teresa? Yep, yep, yep. Good job, right, Pat? Good job. I agree. Thank you so much. Make anyone who will send me three fat quarters. Well, there you go. You should make a little thingy on the website. Hello, Niku. Cheers to you. Hot cuppa. Oh, no. James made me a beautiful gift, Lynn. And I was just all sappy face about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I can't. I can't. I don't know. I don't know. Is it beautiful? Just a beautiful gift. And it's got a bunch of little pockets in there. It's gorgeous. Well, happy 18th birthday, Mr. Niku. You're an adult now. You're an adult now. Whoa, whoa. You're an adult now. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, was it beautiful, Miss Helly? Totally, totally. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Y you, go, you go right ahead. Put yourself a little blurb on the guild website and you get that practice in or whatever it is that you want it's gorgeous and I greatly appreciate it thank you very very much Mr. James and thank you Miss Lona for guiding him in the way of uber craftness <laughs> thank you thank you um okay so we are doing two tote bags today and one is really simple and easy, like a little grocery tote or just something that you, you know, doesn't really matter. I like pockets in my totes. For one thing, there's not a lot of time I have pants with pockets or I'm going out with a shirt or something that has pockets. Like even this, this shirt right here in the pants, I have no pockets on. So I feel a little lost when I get into the grocery store. I'm not sure what to do with my phone. I'm not sure what to do, do with the keys in my car. So it's, I want to put it in something. So I'm going to put it in that interior pocket that I'm going to build out. This is bag number two, sorry, bag number three and bag number eight. We're gonna do bag number three first, simple and easy, get you started. We got this, it's easy peasy, just a few cuts, a few sews, and then we're done. And then bag number eight's a little bit more complicated, but it adds a nice little fancy style. The fabric that I have and I'm working with is all um, Judy Garland Wizard of Oz fabric that was donated to the quilt shop a, quite a few years ago. 
by Miss Pat. And I'm, I didn't know what to do with it. I do want to make a wall hanging, but I don't want, you know, it's, it's kind of hard when you're always making wall hangings, you're always making quilts. So I thought I could, I really love Judy Garland and Wizard of Oz is one of my favorite movies. So why not make a nice little tote that I could use almost on a daily basis to see the fabric, enjoy the fabric, and and move on like and and still be able to make something else like a couple of pillows or even just a small wall hanging with the leftover fabric so i'm very excited by this uh, of the fabric that i chose to make the bag the curved bag so um yep 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 very very, very excited it is complete variety of color for me james i love it i love all colors i really i really have grown to love all colors being a fabric fiberish kind of person and and what i do like especially now uh, well, since working more with with quilt shop, uh, quilt shop stuff and long arm stuff and putting things together, making bags for customers and so on and so forth, like customer sends me pictures, says, I want something similar to that, but can make it this and this. And I'm like, done deal. But it takes time to figure that out. It really does. It's all about mathematical curves, like the, the whole curve bag, right, with the, 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 the curve on the corner. So... Yeah, so thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And thank you everybody for be hanging out with us here today. We did get um, a couple of, uh, no, he's not in Canada. He's in the States. Um, somewhere. Hold on. Oh, no. Um, hello, Joellen. Hello, Hildy. Happy you're here. Hello, 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 hello. Teresa, uh, I put pockets in my daughter's wedding dresses. I, one of the grad dresses, actually two of the grad dresses I did this year for, uh, I did, it was only specialty. Like I either said you pin it where you want it or I'm going to come to your house because I didn't want anybody here. I was like, eh, eh, you ain't coming in my doors. Nah, -uh. So I'll come to you if you really want your dress done that bad. And I really picked and chose who I was attending to this year. And I was, you know. It's my choice. It's my choice, right? For the safety of my family, I'm allowed to make those choices. And yes, it was less business for me, but I think I was making the safest choice all along, like the safest choice all along, trying to make those decisions about who I was going to go see and which jobs I was going to take, which I wasn't. So uh, it was families that I could trust that I knew that were that were abiding by all the rules and so on and so forth. So you know, nonetheless. But yeah, they all had pockets. I was kind of ooh, very nice, very nice. And I've I've taken. Um, a zipper out and putting a corset in. I've taken a corset out and putting zippers in. I've put pockets in. I've taken pockets out. <laughs> I've done it all when it comes to bridesmaid dresses and 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 brides dresses. That's for sure. So it's a little of this and a little of that. So um, all right. So let's get our. We'll lay out our fabric that we're going to do for our first bag, which is bag number three, which is just a grocery tote. Okay. So we have our sides of our fabric, which should be eight by 15. And I've chosen this beautiful little C fabric that I have. Who wouldn't want a C bag? Like seriously, okay. So there we go. And of course it's directional. So I made sure as I was laying it out that the bag's not gonna be, you know, looking sideways with the fabric, that the fish are gonna be going right ways around, all the way around, okay. And then there's like some sea turtles, and some, um, I don't know, some angel fish and some other wonky fish and some, and some coral, you know, all sorts of fun stuff in here. Okay. So those and those and those, and then this is going to be the handles. Okay. And then this is going to be my inner fabric. Okay. So what I did do was try to make a pocket. Did I? Uh-oh. Uh, I thought I had a chunk. Was it gonna make it out of white? I don't know now. Was it gonna make it out of something else? I don't know now. <laughs> Whoops. Mm -hmm. uh, I do for sure meds do that for you. How are you feeling, Miss Ellie? How are you feeling? How are you feeling? I know, I know you've had, you had a, a, a rough weekend, that's for sure. Yeah, those goes up there. Okay. Oh, sorry, it would go this way, and then the end, uh, ends up being the bottom, okay? So let's deal with the handles first, okay? 
I cut them at four inches. You can use uh, webbing, you could use batting in strips, so on and so forth. I'm not going to. I'm just going to fold it in to the two in a, a two line. Give like a little finger press. Because this isn't a very big bag, but I do want it to be sturdy, so. And this may be one of the bags that Munchkin wouldn't mind taking down to the grocery store to uh, get items. So, because they don't sell, you can't buy bags here anymore. You gotta take it out or deal with it somehow. Bring your own bags and pile it in your car. Okay. So folding it in on itself in the center, the raw edges, and then again, it gives you a nice like double thick um, handle, okay? And then once you get the two ends dealt with, it's really easy to get the center dealt with and move outwards from that, okay? Hello, Lynn. So glad she does, bop, 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 bop. <laughs> I do absolutely love it, James. You you are amazing, and thank you so much for thinking of me and enjoying our live stream and just being inspired by what we do here and just have fun. It's Just have fun with fabric. Oh, it's Lona's birthday, too? Oh, to say it's your birthday. Da -na 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 -na. It's my birthday, too. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> do do. Oh, I did get your um a, a pop. Did, oh, sorry, not pop. A munchkin went and got the mail today, and I did get your uh um invoice there, Miss Allison. So thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And we got um, James's package, and then something else. Oh, it was a magazine. If you guys want to see the magazine, I'll show you. It's a Canadian mag. It's a uh, tapestry or. Vapor Arts, whatever, I forget what it's called. Just fold those over, give a nice little strong handle with the layers of fabric. I missed the live last week. Did you decide on a date for this? Yes, yeah, next weekend there, girlfriend. Next weekend, the 26th, come party party from nine to nine. Come party party from nine to nine. Munchkin and I, are going to make Pop and I's anniversary cake. So come join us and we're gonna work on two projects. Um, one is gonna be using the twister tool and we're gonna do the heart, which Miss Helly has suggested as a beautiful pattern to uh, work out. I, I believe it was Miss Helly who did it. If I'm sorry, Helly, I'm, you know, whatever, just forgive me and just accept it and smile proudly. Um, <laughs> um, and then we are going to, yeah, the, um, Twister, hold on, Twister Sister, I think it's Twister Sister Star, and, and whatever, anyways, that, that cuttery, um, for the heart, we're going to do a heart, and then I have another one, it's actually a quilt that I had in the quilt shop here, it was for, um, uh, it's very much a scrap buster, uh, and I'll put all the details of the cuts for you, what you will need for one block on the Guild website. So check that out at www.wesewit.com on the live stream section, uh, live stream projects, and you'll get all the cut and measurements that you're going to need. So yeah, we're going to work on two things. Okay. And I'll get that all set up by tonight. And so be able to check for tomorrow and you can check all week to make sure that you're gonna be quilting along with us on our 12 hours. So I'm so excited. All right, so here's our little handles. Let's go stitch those down. And then pretty much what we need to do with this is do our lining and our outer fabric in the same fashion. And then we're just gonna put right sides together, pin up our handles and then sew all the way around and it makes a really nice easy tote. Um, I did experiment uh, yesterday with using two and a half and three and a half inch strips of fabric to come up with a tote size. Oh, oh, oh. And I came up with this beautiful one here, which will be uh, part of our, you know, uh, you know, mama pop quilt shop bag pattern section once I get it all written out. So, but that's nice. Way. It's a great scrap buster, great stash buster. Okay, and then it's just white on the inside with a little, a little pocket to make sure I got my keys and my phone. Isn't that cute? 
and it's all blue because I had lots of blue fabric. You know I got lots of blue. Mr. Marigold Hexy Block <laughs> during the 12. But there you go. I got mine done. I got mine done, Allison. I'm so proud of myself. Yeah, so that's, that's isn't that a cute little bag? Two and a half by three and a half. <clears throat> and I got a new bolt of fabric in the shop. Uh, thank you, Sylvia. I appreciate that. Here, look. Cheers. I need some tea. I need some tea. <clears throat> Keep me going. Yeah, it's a great um, buster for sure. Um, and then this one here is a panel. Oh, thank you, Robin. Big hugs to you. And I'm thinking maybe if you guys like it, I might give a few away next weekend. What do you think? It's a good size panel. Do you guys like it? Is it pretty enough? Do you think it's, it's worthy? It's a worthy of a giveaway? Isn't it gorgeous? I saw it and I couldn't help myself. I'm like, yes, bolt. <laughs> Isn't it pretty? And just think of all your colors that you could add. Like there's coral, there's mint green, there's sage green, there's winter green, there's sky blue, there's water blue, there's ocean blue, there's, oh, uh, it I actually, uh, sorry, sweetie. Sorry. There we go. Here, I'll actually, I'll stand. And it's a fair size. I'll give you the measurements in just a second so you get a really good look at it. Isn't it pure, pr so pretty? I was so pleased with it when I saw it. I'm like, ooh, we need to do that because we can give it away. So it's like 43 inches by 36. 43 by 36. So that's a great start to... Uh, a lap quilt, a wall hanging, anything else like that. Oh, very pretty. Oh, good, good, good. I'm glad you guys like it. Okay, okay. Well, then you just have to come out and hang with us out on next Saturday, and you might win yourself one. Awesome. I love it. It's, it's so pretty. So pretty. Uh oh, it was one of my handles. I was hoping you guys would like it. I was hoping. It could, it could be a scrappy bag. You can make it whatever you like. All right. Right now, we're just going to do a nice straight stitch next to the folds of this fabric. You could use a decorative stitch on this. This would be nice to do a decorative stitch, I think. Oops. Don't want to lose that. Put your pin in there. There we go. Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, you can just cut it off two inches, two inches square. Yeah, you could totally, no, you totally could, Ellie. Don't be kidding about that. Seriously. Some people might like that. Turn it into some sort of a puzzle or like something that, I think that would look kind of nice behind one of those like um, stained, not stained glass, but like um, attic window sort of um, cutteries. Bulking it out just a little bit by doing the little attic window um, feature or technique on it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you guys liking it. I was hoping I was hoping you would because I thought it'd be a nice, a nice giveaway as well as a challenge for myself. But what I'd like to do is give a bunch away and then challenge the people who make something with it. And then they send it back to me and I'll quilt it up. Like that would be the fun part, right? What did you do with your panel piece, right? What did you make with it? Yeah, he was here, but James had to go somewhere. He asked if I would wait till he was on first before I talked about his package or opened up his package. But Pop is a stickler for opening up everything before it gets on, on, on camera, unless it's from certain people that we really know, know, like Allison or Lois or Gwenny or Miss Ellie. Sorry for the extra step of security, but it's it's to keep us keep us all safe just in case. Just in case, you never know. Not saying you would, but we just have to put that protective measure in place. We've, we've had to deal with some crazy stuff before. So, Hello, Lena. Good afternoon. Uh, 
uh, he'll be back. I think they're in this uh, uh, project. So go ahead, just leave a message. You can say, hey, James, blah, blah, blah. Yada, yada, shish, boom, bam. And I'm sure he'll he'll read it or Lona will tell him. So I think Lona's still in the chat and that that is his mom, if I'm not mistaken. Whoa. Oh, ambulance. Oh, that's never good. Oh, that's never good. Whoa, whoa. That would be a great challenge because everyone... Well, that's what I think, though, Judy, right? Like, why not? Challenge yourself. That's the whole thing about crafting, right? Has Have I ever... Not to this... Uh, you'd actually have to ask Pop because, like I said, he's the one who opens up the packages before I do. <laughs> James is there. There you go. There you go, my quilts. Okay, so what I did is I folded up that four inches and I pretty much made myself about an inch of uh, fabric with four layers in between. So that should be well sturdy enough. I didn't need to add any batting. I chose the same fabric as my main outside of my bag just to make it all match. And I've got two of them here ready to rock. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pin my liner and pin my outer fabric and get that all sewn together at the same time. And then we're going to add our handles and finish it off and then start bag number eight. Okay, so we're going to come back over here. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. And we're going to line up our lining, which I just chose very plain fabric that I have here. Because like I said, this, you know, it's, and, it's, and it's bright so I can see what's in the bottom of the bag. Okay. I'm just going to pin it down both sides. I'm going to sew down both sides first before I, and I'm going to stop about a quarter inch away. So when I go to flip it, so the flat edge of the, like the bottom of the bag is going to be nice and flat. Uh, I have some seam, sort of seam allowance to go with. Okay. Oh, Wendy, uh, adding a, adding a one block wonder border around that panel would look cool. One block wonder. Oh, I'll have to look that one up there, Wendy. One block wonder. It sounds familiar. I just can't see it in my mind right now. Uh, we have lots of places here that would pack, that that we pack our own groceries. Yeah, we pack our own groceries here too. Well, I do anyways. I don't, I don't mind. I, you know, just like cashier, ring it through and then I'll pack it the way I like it. So, cause I'm packing it in my bags, right? And I know what's gonna be smart, uh, um, smart heavy wise, right? Do -do -do -do. Coca Cola? No, I don't drink Coca Cola. <laughs> I used to be quite the Diet Coke fan for quite some time when I was growing up, but then we went to had our honeymoon in Cancun, Mexico, and I had Diet Coke there, and we were there for ten days, and I never had another Diet Coke again in my life. <laughs> yep, no thanks. It tasted way different and ruined me for Diet Coke. Oh, thank you, Janine. Big hugs to you. Thank you, thank you. I'm really looking forward to next week on a couple projects we got going on. Like I said, make, making a cake. Munchkin and I will be making a cake in the kitchen for Pop and I's anniversary, which is Canada Day, which is July 1st. Okay. July 1st is Canada Day here, and it's Pop and I's 26th wedding anniversary. So Munchkin and I will make a cake. I'm so excited by this. I, I think we agreed we all wanted or we all would like uh, a carrot cake. And, of course, that will be made without walnuts. But we'll have to decide whether we want something else to go in with the carrot cake, like something wild, like pineapple or pumpkin seeds or sunflower seeds or cranberries or you know something else we'll make it like a, a wild carrot cake okay and uh cream cheese icing and that's the only time i think pop doesn't mind cream cheese icing is when it comes to carrot cake so okay so there we go we have our 15 by 8 panels pinned to the sides okay almost like a little diaper you see how the little panels are here like a little diaper where your legs would go <laughs> <laughs> so let's sew down that to a quarter inch uh, before the end and then what we'll do is we'll 
pinch them this way and sew across the bottom. Very easy, okay? Mm -hmm. Hello, Mindy. Welcome, welcome. Got to get our roof checked out for damage. Uh-oh, what happened? What happened? Mmm. Hailstorm. Well, that's what I thought, Lena. I thought pineapple would be okay in a carrot cake. So that's why I thought, you know, I'm like, ah, that wouldn't be too bad. It's not on pizza. So, you know, no, no, no ruckus will happen. <laughs> so I think. <laughs> Oh no, oh no. Yeah, hail can be very, very damaging. We, we don't get hail a lot here in Ontario, but we did certainly when I lived in Calgary. We got a fair share of uh, uh, hail when it came to, especially with the Chinooks that would run through and then it was like the weather that followed before it or afterwards. I can't quite get my hair cut yet. I don't think I can get it cut until like mid-July because of the way the restrictions are here. We just came out of lockdown, but it's like slow steps. One week this opens, one week that opens, you know, that sort of thing. So, and of course the hair, hair cutteries are the last. And I really need my hair cut. Mm, the mask is only to use in a few places now. Oh, really? It, it, well, ours seems to be if you got your shots, you don't really have to wear your mask anymore, so. But even though it's only a 40 to 60% chance you won't catch it. It's very confusing. Pop got his shot, one of his shots, or his first shot this week. So he was, he was feeling very tired and arm sore. And he says he's really tired right now. We are open, but still have restrictions on travel. Okay, Anne. Oh, excuse me, UK until June 21st and some bits until July. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'd just crush the pineapple or get a can of crushed pineapple there, Dolores. I thought it'd be fine. We had lightning last night, but no, not a lot. Like I heard, I, like I didn't hear the rain. I saw the rain this morning, like on the cushions and stuff like that and in the yard. Uh, but uh, I did see a little bit of lightning last night. I forget what time it was. It was in between like maybe midnight and four or something like that. But it was just a, a tiny bit of a light show. And even though I opened up the curtain to watch a little bit of it as I was, or wanted to watch a little bit as I was going to sleep, I ended up falling asleep before I actually saw anything really. Mm, oh, Gwen's got to go. Okay, bye, big hugs. Behave. Well, that's no fun. <laughs> All right, everybody, this is what Gwen says. <laughs> big hugs. Thank you, sweetie. Big hugs. Yeah, only Miss, Miss Helly is only the last one to wait for her moderator package. All the other moderators have had their package, their little gifty package. And it wasn't just the fabric that I gifted to them. There was a couple other little goodies in there too, so. And I hope, I hope Miss Helly gets hers very, very soon. Actually, I sent something extra special to her. So, because, you know, it's Canada. It's Canada. Okay, so what I've done is I've sewn down each side that we have pinned, okay? Just so, so you guys are on the same wavelength I am, okay? And then I'm gonna take the side part here. Oh, sorry, get, pop, get back on there. Side part here, and I'm gonna squish it together so it meets up just like that, and then I'm gonna sew it, okay? So you can probably put like two pins in here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, and then again on the side, put a couple pins in. Now this is not a big bag, but they, sometimes you don't want a big bag because in the, with a big bag you end up to overfill it unless it's with lighter objects like bread and chips and, you know, tacos or lettuce or whatever, right? So, um, you know, you make the bag size that you think you're going to need for your grocery shopping trips, you know? You know you get lots of canned goods or you know you get lots of frozen stuff, then maybe 
batting your bag a couple of times and close it at the top or something like that. You should now. I can't wait for it to get. <laughs> well, I'm open, open to be soon, Miss Ellie. Miss Lois got hers. Miss Gwenny got hers. Miss Allison got hers. I knew yours would be the longest because I had so much farther to go. Like I said, it's doing the like breaststroke. <laughs> Very few restrictions here in Virginia, USA. Much of the population is fully vaccinated, vaccinated in my area. I choose to continue to mask because I want to encourage masking for people not vaccinated. No, I hear you. I hear you. I wear mine still. And when I go out after the stream to go down and drive 45 minutes to go get fried chicken, I will and then make myself back. <laughs> Uh, big hugs. Get ready to, so I can get on the road. Oh, wh where are you going? Where are you going, Lona? On the road again. Do, 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 do. Uh, Jackie says, we have been out of lockdown for a while, but the delivery drivers are still required to use masks. Okay. Mostly since first week of January and started the summer break last week. We didn't go back after the April whatever fiasco that happened. So, all right. So I got her liner done. I meant to put my pocket in there, but I don't think I cut my pocket, did I? Hence why I was very confused. Okay, this one's going to be pocketless. That's fine. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Now, did I cut that wrong? No, I couldn't have. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, for some reason I thought I cut that wrong. I was like, oh, for Pete's sakes. Okay, so, uh, I, okay, okay, the reason why this was the way it is. Okay, so, uh, in my cutting of my fabric, if I were to have cut one strip of 37 inches, I was going to have half of my fabric facing the way I wanted to and half of my fabric upside down for the other side. So I chose to half it, add a quarter inch to each side for the seam allowance, and then that way I had them both facing the right direction on both sides of the bag. So what I have to do at this point in time is sew these two together at the bottom, okay? And that's the key with directional fabric. If you don't have directional fabric, you don't have to be so fussy wussy about it. But if, if you know, if you want your fishes going right way and not upside down, you're going to have to do a little cut and then sew back together. Mm, I don't think that's possible, Niku. We've only been on YouTube since uh, 2015, so. Sixteen, sorry, sixteen, not even fifteen. It was sixteen. So only five years. We just celebrated five and a half, so it's pretty, isn't it? You know what, Robin? I'm gonna share a secret with you, and so you don't think I'm lying. Oh, what happened to my screen here? <laughs> I don't know where you went. Uh oh. Uh, hold on. Let's try and escape here. Escape, escape. I am way in something crazy here, and I don't know how I got there. Uh. <laughs> As Pop goes over to the other one. <laughs> I'm like, make it! Make it right, honey, make it right. <laughs> I don't know where I went. <laughs> oh, man. What did you do? I don't know, because I, I must have bumped something. I was always moving things around here. Anyways, okay. <laughs> Pop to the rescue. Um, I think actually it was Pop and I, we were doing some thrift shopping, and this is from the uh, Missionary Thrift Store. And I got about five meters of this ocean fabric for five bucks. There's the tag still on it. And then flipping through the little rack of the hangers and stuff like that, I find a panel that matches this completely. And it's a large panel. I'm like, 
what? And it also was $5. So a complete quilt top project for 10 bucks. So it's always a good thing to check out your little thrift store. I was so pleased with it. I still left the tag on it. Five bucks. Five bucks. Yep. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to use a little bit of that fabric. I'm going to make myself a bag because I like, I like sea critters. I've, I, I, I've always liked a fish tank. I always had a fish tank when I was a kid, you know, so enjoy, enjoy what you have and what you can. So I thought, why not make a fishy bag? So once I sewed the two bottoms together, I'm just going to split the seam and then treat it like I would any of the other pieces or the piece that they actually, I said for the bag, right? Okay. All right. So there we go. Doo -doo. And then we're going to take our side panel pieces here. Make sure they're right side up, not upside down fishies. We want them right side up fishies. Okay. They're upside down, then they're, they're not alive. Hello, Sue. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Becky. I know what a deal. So always, always give your little second hand uh, and I was like uh, Bibles, Bibles for Mission uh, thrift shop. Uh, and it was near a lens mills in Guelph. So that's why we went in there. And I'm always, I was always actually looking for backings for charity quilts. I always look for top sheets, clean top sheets or something that I could oxy clean or bleach or you know what I mean? Like something like that for a charity backing. Hey, if I can get it for three bucks, and I don't got to piece it. I'm a happy camper. So, because we do, we do still and still do a lot for charity here. Nobody's really accepting anything, so there's kind of no point in making the fuss about it. Mm, how Kathy is doing this, Kathy? Which one? Which one there, Sass? I'm sorry, Kathy Quilts. We've got a couple of Kathys here. Ah, oh, it seems like I might have been your buddy forever. I thought it was like, drone's on forever. <laughs> just, it just get it stitched. We're a family. We all love the same thing. We're family. I'm very, very sore. I'm beginning to think I broke a bone in my foot too. Oh, I feel like I'm walking on. Oh, probably, Sue. You better check that out. You could have pulled the ligament too, though. It doesn't take much. It doesn't take much. For the first time in my life, I have a net in front of my balcony door. Thank goodness. What a relief. Not a safe, not safe for my dogs from, from a heart attack when the flies are inside. Mm, I'm confused by that, Ellie. Sonia, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, Uta. Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Working on the grocery tote bag right now. Uh, oops, don't put that there, silly. Oh, oh my gosh. I thought I had this in here. I clearly did not. What a dork. Shiny objects. My goodness. All right, try this again, shall we? I was jumping ahead of the game. Uh, well, hello, Brenda from Montreal. Bonjour, comment ça va? Welcome, welcome to the chat. Happy to have you here. We are in southeastern Ontario, Canada. Well, obviously Canada, because you know us. You're we're you're we're your neighbor. Hi. <laughs> welcome, Brent. What's up, me? Very nice. Very nice. Good, good. Welcome, welcome. We are working on two tote bags today. If you go exclamation bag, we'll get you a link to both of them. This one, uh, the first one I'm working on is a grocery tote bag, and I've chosen to use fishy fabric for this. I've got my lining already done with my eight, uh, hold on, 18, yeah, 18 by, no. Oh boy, hold on. Where's my, where's my measure schmintz? Uh oh, upside down, upside down, you turn me, you're giving up instinctively. Um, ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. 
we have, what do we have here? We have uh, 15 by eight for the sides and 37 by 14 for the center. Okay, very easy, okay. Want to make bags today, so five, very nice. This is simple, this is super easy. We got, we got one easier one, which is number three on the exclamation bag list. And we're gonna do number eight, which is the one with the curved pocket. We did start a little bit of that um, before stream, just because I wasn't sure how long it was gonna take to get things done here. So uh, I, better, I better get cracking, okay? So I gotta sew down my sides. I put my side panels onto my main fabric and because this is fish fabric, it was directional. I did cut it in the center to be able to flip it. Uh, so it was directional on both sides, okay? So let's sew it down. Hello, Laurel, welcome to the chat. Just a regular stitch, regular foot. Got purple thread, cause I can. And before I get to the bottom, I'm gonna try and stop a quarter inch of a way so I have some sort of space to work with when I attach the bottom to the sides. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any questions about these projects? Please ask away. Or not necessarily even this project. What about any other project? You got 180 some odd people hanging out with you today that you can answer any one of your questions. We are all here to work together. Francis, hi from Texas. Love your quilting and chats. Brighten up my day. Well, thank you, Francis. You just brightened up my day. Big squishy hugs to you. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Just sewing the sides uh, panel sections onto the main and trying to stop at least a quarter inch away so I have some place for my bottom fabric to come up and sew to. Okay. <laughs> Too much fraying. Oh, what was fraying? What was fraying, Uta? <laughs> I shop thrift stores for fabric all the time. Love King Flat. No kidding, Brenda. I am with you there, girlfriend. Mm -mm. It has saved me many, many heartaches trying to spend $80 or more for a wide back for a really good size queen quilt for like my nieces or a family member or something when I really, uh, the main part is the first part, like the front part. And I would just, I'm like, I'm, I'm grabbing a king size sheet, make sure it's nice and clean and no stains and no nothing. And if there was a stain, I'd go and put something embroidered over it, like a heart or a star or something. Just add that extra little thing for the back. So, all right. So once we have those done on both sides, we have this little pop out section here, which we need to flatten out. Okay. And then sew on down. And that becomes the bottom of our bag. Apparently there's honking going on. There's honking going on right here. It's a celebration of honking throughout the year. <laughs> I don't know. Hello, Kathleen. These bags are great. I usually make the jelly roll bags from, I, I, I don't think I've ever seen that uh, jelly, jelly roll bag. So I'll have to go check that out there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to thumbs up. Thank you, Miss Ann. Big hugs to you. Big hugs to you. All right, now stitch on down. I had one of those song worms in my head, and I know I know I've had it before. And it just I hate I hate it. It drives it drives you bonkers. You just want to you want to get it out, but you kind of enjoy it all at the same time. And it's just like stop, stop. But then when it comes in your head, you're still like grooving and snapping, man. Like ah, stop. <laughs> I just can't handle it anymore. <laughs> all right, make sure you back step at the corners there. Okay, now we're gonna turn this right side out just so you can see it. No worries, Lisa. Lisa Peg, happy here. Hello, Carol. Hello, Donna P from Michigan. You're not very far away. Michigan's not far. Oh, who? Sorry about that. 
Uh, I got a Lone Star just the star and need to fill in. Anybody know how to go about it? Lone Star just the star? To fill in. So is it a panel piece of a Lone Star? Jennifer? I need some more explanation. Well, then check out Debbie Shore sewing on YouTube. She is a UK and makes loads of bags, purses, and bags. Well, very nice. Thank you, Sylvia. I appreciate it. I like bags and totes and all sorts of good things like that. This song that never ends. No, Sass. No. I refuse. <laughs> Thank you, Double D, for subscribing to the channel. All right, so that's going to be the outside of her bag. Okay. Da, 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 da. Now, we want to find kind of the center-ish of each panel. Okay, so we're going to spread her out here. I got my little chalk. There we go. Ha ha ha. I got you, Chalky. You can't ride for me. Oh, look at my new ruler. You guys saw what I did to my other one? Look at my brand new ruler. And Pop is amazing. Brand spanking new. Look at all those lines. It's amazing. It's amazing what one looks like after, you know. Hold on. Ooh. There we go. There's the other one. After years of use, right? After years and years of use, the difference. So, I know. Yeah, it cracked there and then cracked here. And it's just, it's way too unstable. So, I'm afraid. I'm afraid to use it unless I absolutely need to. And I'd, I'd like to tape it up real good. But it has to be a thin tape, right? Because it can't affect the... Uh, the cut so all right so here we go let's find the center I know what a difference right what a difference a ruler makes but that's I was trying to remember the last time we replaced that one it's probably been four years but and I use it a lot like I use it a lot a lot like I trim up customer quilts off the long arm I'm making binding for quilt, customer quilts I'm putting the, that on too I'm cutting my own fabric I'm this I'm that I'm you know what I mean so I it's it's definitely definitely been used all right so from post to post here we got 13 so half of 13 is six and a half so let's put a little line in the six and a half zone and then half of six and a half would be three and a quarter so let's put a little line at the three and a quarter zone one, two, three, and a quarter. And then that's where we're going to try and put our handles to go from on the outside edge. On the outside edge, okay. There. Make sure it stays straight. You don't want to curve this or flip or flop this at all. You're going to end up with a twist in your handle. And this, that's what you want. You know, you can do it all crazy, wanky, whatever you like. Okay. And then we're going to put it that in there. And I think that's a good, nice spacing. And here is the edges of the fabric where it's going to come down to uh, the sides of the bag. And I think that's good uh, support and stability between the two handle spaces. So let's pin that in there. Okay. I, I thought about making it a, a smaller ruler there too, but a lot of the lines are gone. You know, the essential important lines, right? So... And once you get the one side done, it's easy to just flip it and pin up uh, next to the other side, right? So you get them all both, both together. Oh, very nice. Oh, I'm going to love this bag. And like I said, this would be one that Munchkin wouldn't mind taking to the grocery store. So I'm, I'm happy to put it in our collection of, uh, of, of bags for the grocery store. So... What I end up mostly doing, especially if it's people I know and I don't want to give them uh, like, a, like a, a paper bag or a plastic bag here, I'll just say, hey, I'm going to drop off in one of my bags. You just return it whenever, right? And then I end up giving them one of my bags and, that I've made and then I never see them again. <laughs> okay, so that is now pinned to the inside, okay? And hopefully that will stay nice and straight. I'm going to put an extra pin in there just to make sure. It seems like it was all twisty. And then we're going to line up our lining or inner fabric on top of that. Sorry? Mm, the 
rail fence quilt my mom made for us that is on our bed was a tear has a tear in it. Guess I need to put an applique patch on it. You suggest, I, yeah, that's probably the best thing to do there, Lee. Unless you, there's enough fabric to join those two together and just do like a little whip stitch, or I, if there's not, like it, maybe it's it's free to the point where you can't. Maybe a little heat and bond, the double stick. You tuck it under. You peel it out. You heat it, and then you peel off the top, and you know, and, and then just like <laughs> stick that sucker together. Ain't going nowhere. That would be another an, another suggestion of, of getting it uh, getting it together for sure. Okay, so I want to turn this so it's the wrong side out, right side is in, the handles are going to be tucked in. Okay, and then I'm going to take this one, which is going to be with the right sides are going to be touching together. So this, I'm, again, I'm, I'm going to be seeing the outside of it. I want to make sure the seams for the side panel parts are lining up. So I'm going to pin those first because I know they should be the same. I cut them the same. They should be the same. So I'm going to pin that, tuck my fabric in. And of course, around this edge somewhere, most likely in between two handle spaces, a little bit in, I'm going to back stitch on the front and the back. I'm going to leave a space to be able to turn this right side around to have everything nice and center and then be able to do a nice top stitch to seal everything up. Okay. I hope we get to the second bag today. Okay. We've all on an hour. Okay. All right. All right. Crack on. Crack on, Laura Lynn. <laughs> Okay, and then what I want to do is make sure those get lined up first and then you work your way on the other ones. And of course, you're going to remove your handle pins to readjust them so the, all the fabrics are together. Okay, so you're, when you sew over the around the edge, you're including those handles and you're going to do like a little back stitch to make sure they get extra, extra in there. And the sheep on it with the real... Ah, that's a good idea, Pop! That's funny, actually. I like that. It's a good idea. Well done. Okay, so I pulled my pins out for where I had the ha uh, handle placement and I'm just putting it in where my lining fabric is. And again, still here, I'm holding it. One, two, lining it up, putting them back in. One, two, okay. And then I'm gonna do the other side. Laying it flat. If you cut everything the same size, you'd have you should have no issues whatsoever. Okay. And keep it nice and straight. I find if you only put one pin in, sometimes you can get, the handle tip can get a little askew and you got one that's just kind of off to the side a little bit. I mean, hey, if, if that's what you want, you go for it. But I, I know most people would be a little irritated by that and would want to fix it, so. And so save yourself from having to seam rip it. Just pop a cup, two pins in on either side to make sure it stays nice and straight. Okay. So, and then one on each pocket uh, liner part. Okay. Here and here. And then of course, we're going to leave the gap in between one of the handles to sew it all together. Okay. There's a pin there. Okay. All right. Let's get some sewing done here. Let's put the needles away though. Ow, ow, ow. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to the 12 hour stream. Now that's next Saturday. What's brother? There will be a couple of projects there, my quilts. One's going to be the uh, twister tool to make the heart, which, uh, like I said, I think it was suggested by Miss Helly. Please tell me if I'm wrong. Um, and uh, the other one is a scrap buster. So I will put the pattern. Uh, up on our guild website uh, for each block. It's like three and a half, two three and a halfs by three and a halfs, two four and a halfs by, or sorry, two three and a halfs by five, and then two three and a halfs by six and a half. So, and then that all becomes one block, and then you just keep flipping and flopping as you go. So, um, I had a quilt project here. Actually, I'll show it after I, I make this bag, uh, the one in my customer project. I still have yet to trim it, and uh, you can see what I'm talking about and what it'll possibly look like, okay? Mm -mm. 
Okay, I'm gonna start close to the center of this one, but make sure I'm including my handle. I'm gonna do a little back stitch. Try and take my pins out before I get to them. And as I go over each handle, I'm gonna go back stitch again. Don't forget to lift, shift. Yeah, it's a nice good uh, stash buster for this, the, the one for next weekend. So I figure if we worked on the, I don't think the, the heart will take us the whole day, but I do want us to be, uh, be able to bust our stash. So uh, on, a, on a nice, fun, pro fun, easy project, you know, that we, it's kind of, you know, it's not so complicated. And then I'm going to show you what I have after we're done the, the bags today. Show you what I have in store for a couple other streams coming up. It's going to take some time, but it's going to be a great way to bust that beautiful uh, gift box that I was given a fabric that you can possibly see sitting on the corner of my desk. Okay. Do, do, do. Sorry. And of course, where there's two pins, we want to make sure. Do an extra little back stitch. Okay, so here's where we started. We did a little back stitch. Come up a little closer. Do a little back stitch. Trim the threads. Now we're gonna pull everything through this little hole. We're gonna pull it out this way. Okay, so be patient. Grab a corner and then sort her all out. There you go, Jennifer. There's the guilt website. Yeah, yeah. We try to. We try to. I mean, sometimes things get away with us, and you know, the day just pops on us too fast, and we don't get a chance to post things that we want to. But most times, most times, I try to. I try to do it. Okay. Once we pull that, so the right side is out. I'm gonna tuck our inner lining in. You could give it a little press if you like. Wiggle and woggle the top edge to get it nice and smooth. And of course, where we pulled our fabric out from, we want to pin that back up. And then we want to put a nice top stitch all the way around. Guess, guess where? The top. Oh, I know. Who would have thunks it? Okay. And that's pretty much there and there. So let's let's get this going. So uh, when it comes to this part, you kind of want to hide your start and stop. So make it close to one of the seams on the corner sides or in the middle. It'd be less less um, visible for people. Okay. And of course, you can use a decorative stitch, decorative thread, all sorts of doodads and thingamabobs and special your machine does. Whatever makes you happy. Add bells, add whistles. You could add some tassels, you could add some uh, piping, which is piping is on, on the next bag. So if you didn't have piping um, and you, you don't want to go buy any, I can, I can show you with a little bit of rope that we have here how to make your own piping. Okay, and I do have that all set up and ready to, to show you. Is. Let me do the next part of the bag. Next bag, sorry, bag number eight. And there's 10 free bags on this website to choose from of what you want to do. Uh, we have some uh, pleather sort of material here. There's one that looks like it's a leather bag, which is very simple. There's no seams. You just literally sew the two pieces together. I think that little pleather material would be fantastic for that. You can make a couple of bags like that. And of course, it, it would definitely be a strong bag because of the pleatheriness. Fake, fake nether leather pleather suede whatever and then back up to where we started and it's all sealed all the way around we got ourselves a lovely grocery tote okay perfect who's coming shopping with me tassels for much <laughs> I would Lynn I would <laughs> isn't that beautiful that's a gorgeous fish bag 
go to the fish market with my fish bag. Isn't that awesome? Very cute. Very cute. And of course, you can stabilize this with uh, uh, fusible webbing if you want to make it a little stronger. Uh, you can uh, make it a little bit bigger, make it a little longer, make it a little wider, whatever it is that you want to do to tweak it. Uh, you make uh, two different size handles, ones to carry like this, and maybe longer ones to make sure you're carrying over your arm or, you know, cross body or something like that. Very nice. I'm pleased with it. Like I said, at least Munchkin will be like to be seen with it instead of my rainbow dry bags that I would send him with me. <laughs> okay, beautiful. All right, so here is the plan. Welcome back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't see why you can't use any sort of squares whatsoever, just as long as you kind of make work out the measurements. So I've had these two patterns for a very long time since I bought the speckled half quarter bundle way back in 16 or 17 or possibly even 18. And I picked up these two patterns. I could not find them. I don't know where they went. I was very confused. I was looking for something else today and of course found them. So this one here is the Peacock English Paper Piecing Project. It only comes out to 20 by 20, but oh, here we go. Okay. Only comes out to 20 by 20. So we'll be working on that project with some of these beautiful fabrics under here. Okay. And then the next project I'd like to do, or maybe even beforehand, is this, this is beautiful here. Okay. And then there's an alternative colored version here. So you can see that, but I'm going to do the one underneath with my rainbow fabric. What do we think? Can you see that? And that regard uh, co constitutes foundation paper piecing. Oh, sorry. I know. So that's going to be our next couple projects because I am not going to let this go to waste. I'm not going to sit on it and look at it and smell it and cuddle it and anything else. I'm going to use it. I'm going to make something with it. I am. So this one should come out to, what did it say approximately? Where was it in here? I know we had it because I went over it with Pop. On the back, honey? No, it doesn't say. Oh yeah, you're right, duh. Duh. So view A, which is this one right here, measures to be 48 by 51. View B, which is this beautiful one right here, measures out to be 48 by 48. And view C, which is this one right here, is going to be 51 by 61. Is that going to be amazing? I'm really excited. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm really nervous. And I think I'm going to have to do the white background very much scrappy. I'm, I'm just going to have to do whatever whites I have in the quilt shop and that's just going to be the, the way it is and I'm going to use all these beautiful colors to make me all these beautiful feathers. So, isn't that pretty? I hope you guys are here to hang out with me on that. We'll have to be a couple of weeks though. It's going to be so lovely. It's going to be so lovely. It is called a foundation paper piecing. So I got to copy things. I got to, I got to copy, I got to copy lots. Yeah. I think that's the one right here. And it's look at that tiny little piece. That's not even like an inch. Hold on. What's this one? It is a half an inch, a half an inch by a half an inch. That piece right there. And it doesn't say to measure up either. Uh, measure this line to ensure your, oh, it says 100% to, to size. 100%. So 100% bigger than this. Is that what it's going to be? Is that what I understand? I don't think I've ever copied anything like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 what, what? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Peacock Abstractions by Violet Craft. Violet Craft. Yeah, the Peacock Abstractions quilt pattern is multi-optional quilt pattern in the abstraction series. This foundation paper piecing quilt pattern is made of units that can be combined in different ways to make different quilts. There we go. 
So just because I'm going to do this one doesn't mean I can't do this one, right? Afterwards, at some point in time. But I really want this one because I love rainbow. I love working with all the colors and see what it turns out. I can't wait. I can't wait to use this. It's going to be so fun. It would be giant. Well, that's what it, it did. That's what it said. To, okay, no, no, no. I think it's just, here. Measure the line. Yeah, no, no, no. That's the piece. That's the size. Not 100%. It's because you got the little uh, arrow section right there, right? So, and that measures up. So, yeah. Fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then that one. That one, too. That would be fun to bust a couple of those colors. Especially like the burgundies and some of these. You could choose different colors too. Yay, I'm so excited. Printed as it is. Okay, that's what I was thinking. But it seems really tiny for that little piece in there. Oh my goodness, right? Like, wow. Wow, indeed. Okay. Done that, done that. Now bag number two. Okay. So, this one is a little bit more complicated. Do, 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 do. It has piping. Do, do. Hold on, I will show you. I've done, I've done just a, a pocket here so you can see. Okay. I just started the draft. Oh, very nice, Susan. You have to share a picture of that on the website. I'd love to see it. So, this is one of the pockets. Okay. And I've used um, Wizard of Oz fabric that was uh, gifted to the shop here uh, for this beautiful project. And this is piping. So I have piping here that I'm going to use for mine. It's a nice uh, medium colored purple. But if you don't have piping and you, and you maybe have some of this rope, okay, doesn't have to be colored. And of course, this would be the fabric that you would want your, your piping into. You could add it just like this, fold it over your fabric, and then use your, um, hold on, where does it, your little zipper foot, okay? And then you would ride it right in the center, and that would give you your piping. And then when you added it to here, and you sewed it down, you'd scoot the needle over right up next to the piping itself, okay? So you could easily make your own, okay? Of course, this would be the fabric that you would want it to be done in, right? Like if it was, say, this fabric that you wanted the piping in, be the same way, okay? Just cut a strip that you have enough to come down on the either side. So if you had this little chunk here, you'd probably maybe do two inches just to make sure you have lots of coverage, okay? Mm-hmm. How do you EPP if you don't you don't like to use a glue? Um, I actually I found it was just easier just to whip around. Just to whip around the template. Then try to glue and then whip around. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, I do answer questions. You got one? Mm-hmm. Oh, Molly wants to know if I can say hi to her. Hello, Molly. Hello, hello, hello. Big hugs to you. Do you like Wizard of Oz? Do you like Wizard of Oz? It's one of the best movies. It's one of my favorite movies. Yeah. So, and of course I put, um, it did say for uh, fleece. Um, oh, I always base an English paper. Uh, I, I found it was just easier to do with that than, than glue first. I don't know, I've, I found the glue a little frustrating. So, but that's just me, that's just me. You, know, you, do, you do what you gotta do for you. Okay, so uh, let's get uh, the step on the go here for the, um, Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da that's the back. No, no, we want this and this and this. Okay, the piping. Okay. All right, so we have our main front fabric here. Okay. And then we're going to take our piping and we're going to line it up. 
I'm going to put right to edge to edge. That's what I did with the first one. And then I just sewed it in a little bit more. So maybe my pocket is a tiny bit shorter, but I'm really not too concerned about that. So you're just going to pin it. And then when it comes to these um, curves of up and down, you're just going to clip a little, okay, to help it uh, go all the way a little bit there. I'm always motivated to sew. I like to sew. It's my passion. It's also my job. But I really enjoy my job. Hello, Rebecca. If you don't have rope, you could use rounded shoelaces. I didn't even think about that, Rebecca. Great tip. Great tip, Miss Rebecca. Didn't even think about that. I thought even if you had like a cotton or like a thick yarn-ish, that could have been easy enough to stick as a piping. Or you don't even have to add piping if you don't want to. I mean, it's all your choice, right? It's all your choice. Okay, so I know my curve's going to be up in this zone right here. So I'm going to take my little snips. And I'm going to go where it's down a little bit and just kind of clip in just a little bit, like maybe a quarter of an inch and in like four or five spots, just on the piping, not the fabric. Okay, same up here. And then it's gonna be coming down here somewhere-ish. So let's put a few there. Okay, should be easier for us to manipulate it. <laughs> yeah, start off with bags, bags, totes, especially that one we just did was so simple and easy and very fast. Just a couple cuts of fabric and you know, you're, you're off to the races. So, and you got yourself a lovely grocery tote that you're not, you know, using a plastic bag from the grocery store. You're using it for other things. You could take the books, you could go to the library, take it as your picnic basket, you know, whatever. Packing up stuff for the, for the family, for the weekend, or for yourself. Um, even just storage, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with having it as a storage bag as well. Put your winter gear in it, pack it all up in a bag like that, or a couple bags, and then put it away so you just have to take the bags out when it comes to winter time. All right, so now I'm going to switch out to my uh, zipper foot, which I find it easier to come close to the piping. To get it down for its uh, for first sew and second sew. Yeah, well, well, exactly, Beverly, exactly. Okay. Now, so I just left that as the one that's going to come right down in the center because when I go to sew the uh, top and or the front side and the liner side of the pocket together, I'm gonna to scoot this needle over to this side and come in closer to the piping itself. So it looks more like this when we finish, okay? You see that? So it's just, it's just prettier. You don't have to have this in there though. I mean, that's completely up to you. I'm not going to go too fast. I'm just going to try and go to as much as I can. You take your needles out as you go. Take your pins out. Now, here we go. We have, you can see where we got our piping on the one side here. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to take our uh, liner that we have for the other side of this and adhere it to our um, cut piece that we made for our pocket, which is part of the pattern printout. 
Here is the pattern printout. And for some reason, I couldn't find the tape. So I stitched the two pieces together with a zigzag. <laughs> I'm like, I can't find the tape. That's it. I'm stitching them together. That's it. That's it. I'm out. I'm stitching it. <laughs> so you want to make sure your fold line is here. But then when you go to do your, uh, what they were talking was fleece inter inter interfacing. I was using like a uh, thick or thicker foam in in interfacing. You want to make sure you're doing it on the inside um, um, uh, lines a half inch in. So, okay. Well, I know I did like, ah, it's stitching you. I can't find the tape. I was so frustrated, man. I was so frustrated. Okay. So now we're going <laughs> to press that to the back of the other, there we go, the other piece that I have here. Okay. Just like that. I'm going to take our sticky side and we're going to lay it right up on there where it seems to be half an inch all the way around. So one side inside of the pocket section is the same as what's this section here and the other one is the same at the yellow brick road that is the same as the bottom. Okay. Franken pattern. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> okay, there we go. And now we're just going to press that adhesive onto our uh, fabric. Okay, so be patient. Read the instructions on how your adhesive needs to go, whether you use f fusible interfacing or iron on, uh, sorry, sew on interfacing or whatever. Mine's going to be a little thicker. I use the thicker stuff for the pockets and then just uh, regular. Uh, lightweight interfacing for the uh, other bag pieces. So hopefully it still works out. I might cut a chunk of this fusible um, batting here uh, for the bottom just to give it a little bit of uh, stability. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I'm, I'm going to be so happy to have this bag as part of the ones I take out. I'll be so excited to be able to use it and see this beautiful fabric. Okay, so now we have that together. It's all one piece. Okay. Now we're gonna take this. Line it up. Pin it. And then when we sew again, we're gonna sew right against, oops, that's gotta go this way. Uh, right against uh, that uh, piping because we want it to be on the inside, not the outside. Almost did a dork move there. Okay. So fold your piping in so it's next to your right sides of your fabric. Pin along your curve. And even here, this is where you want to also take your little snips and do a couple little uh, relief cuts for on the curve concaves and, and uh, I always forget the other one. Convex. Okay. And then a couple here. Okay. Pin it. And don't forget, next weekend we got 12 hours, 9 a.m. Eastern to 9 p.m. Eastern. Come hang out with us. We're gonna have some, some good fun. Munchkin and I will be making Papa and I's anniversary cake. We're gonna make a carrot cake and something else fruity going on with it. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll, uh, we'll see, what, see what's going on for dinner. Maybe we'll make a lasagna or something. No, we've done that before. I don't know, we'll figure something out. Okay, all right, so trim this off here. Now we're going to come in and we're going to sew right next to, so we're going to have to scoot our foot over to the farthest position to the left to be able to come in real close next to this piping so that when we flip it all outwards, it's right, it's looking really beautiful with the beautiful rainbow next to it. I don't I think I've had anything that's tulip pink, so. Yeah, you could just use five and a half inch squares and just cut out the shape you need, right? All right, so let's sew that. Oh, we need to first, uh, what was it? Here we go, zero four. Yep, 
there we go perfect okay so that moved that needle all the way over to here ow that hurt poke myself uh, all the way over to here so it's going to come down right over here on the far left hand side for that zipper for zipper foot so zipper foots aren't just for zippers okay slow and steady you're just hugging it make sure things are nice and straight and you're going to sew the top and the bottom in a straight seam okay and then you're going to flip it through one of the sides uh, to get it to the right side out and then you're going to end up tucking in the sides to make uh, side of the bag, I believe. So, okay. Snug it nice and tight. And the key thing is, the key thing here, right now, so I can show you here, is making sure your current stitch that you're doing right now is on the left hand side of the one you stitched down to sew your piping. That way those stitches will never ever be seen and you're snugging it right up close so it really hits the center part of the pocket where you want it right here at the top on both sections okay so that is that is key that is key and you can see you can see right here where i've got my original one and then my second one we're a little bit apart which is perfect that's what you want you want you want you want, you want to make sure you have that And take your time, take your time. And this, all these patterns can all be done by hand as well. They don't need a machine. You know, if you're confident in your hand stitching skills and you're going camping for a couple weeks, I expect some bags out of you. <laughs> yeah. All right, so now we're gonna take that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Almost lost our thread there. Get back in there. Okay. Now we're going to take it and we're going to switch the foot out and put the other foot, the regular foot on. Scoot that one. Okay. And then sew along the bottom. Okay. Make sure it's locked in. Make sure you've locked it in. And then just, oop. There we go. Start at the beginning. <laughs> I said if you wanted to, Helly. Not that you had to. <laughs> you totally could, though. Totally could totally had some of this bag. <laughs> the bag for that we are doing today. What, oh, oh, what, what's up, Robin? Did I miss something? What's going on? Um, okay, that's all there. So at the bottom, now we're going to flip it. We're going to take this. And we're going to pull it the other way. Okay. And that, moving this out of the way, and moving this out of the way, and that out of the way. Let's hand press her flat. And if you're happy with the way your curves go around with your piping, awesome. You could put a decorative stitch all across here if you wanted to. That's kind of got a little, oh no, that's okay. All right, just had to work it. Just had to work it. Okay. And then uh, what I did is just to make sure that these guys were still staying together, I just put a nice uh, stitch down either side and then I got it ready for my uh, side exterior uh, bag section. So that is next for us and then we'll do that here. Okay, isn't that beautiful? Love the side pockets. And of course you can flip and flop if you wanted to. Have Dorothy on the one side, the yellow brick road on the other, but I like them both with the rainbow right next to that purple piping. I just, I thought that was a nice little accent color to go along with this whole bag project, so. Oh, thank you, Sheila, big hugs to you. Big hugs to you. I've got regular stitch, okay. So I've got my exterior cut fabric and my upper and lower parts, okay. And 
Now I haven't put this bag together, so I, I'm hoping I have everything right. It, I was a little confused by reading some of the instructions, but that's okay. That's, that's, that's allowed. Okay, so now we have that. We're going to give that a press and then we're going to stabilize it with some uh, interfacing, okay? Which is this, just some lightweight stabilizer right here, okay? And I've already done that for the insides fabric for the inside of the bag. So let's press this and then we'll stabilize it. Okay. Hello Sharon, welcome to the chat. Hello everybody, you say hello Elaine. I've never used piping before, but you have explained this so well. Well, thank you. Thank you. I hope so. Why not? Why not? Why not use it? Why not use it? If it steps up a little project, a little uh-uh, then give it a go. Why not? Okay. Then we got our chunk of stabilizer, bigger than our piece of fabric that we needed. Okay. Let's try and scoot it down a little bit. Give it a trim so we can use it. <laughs> yes, tomorrow's Father's Day. Can you believe it? Father's Day. I made uh, bacon for Pop this morning. And I'm going out to get him fried chicken. His one of his favorite fried chicken places. That's why I'm traveling 45 minutes just in one direction just for chicken. So I want to make sure Pop's happy. So I am, I am doing that right after the stream. I'm heading for chicken. Anybody want to come on a chicken adventure with me? <laughs> we'll just go cluck, cluck, clucking along. <laughs> All right, now we're going to make sure the pebble the side, the gluey side is up against the back of our fabric and we're going to give it some heat loving to make sure it sticks. Okay. <laughs> it's some good chicken. It's good. It's called Maple Lodge chicken. They do it right here on, it is, what is it? Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill here in, in Ontario. If you go Maple Lodge chicken, it'll pop up and that's where I'll be going. <laughs> okay, so I don't know why they had your two different pieces for your, I think because it's the, bot, some of it makes the bottom, I don't know, like I said, I didn't do this pattern before, I know you're supposed to go two and a half inches up from the bottom to be able to place this where you want it, I didn't do a decorative stitch on that one, so I'm not going to do a decorative stitch on this one, let's move this up, and a half and then it wants you to mark the center half okay which would be right like right here with the chalk and then come straight down and you're going to stitch there okay which is easy to wipe off afterwards and then you're going to do a stay stitch all the way across the bottom here which I've done already on this one and then I sew down the, the, the sides okay so you can see how it's all nicely stabilized here okay for that one so that's what we're going to do and they also said coming over about four inches and putting another uh, section here but I'm like I didn't see it for both sides if anything I might just do it for one side I don't I don't really know I don't really, I kind of like just the big four pockets. I can put keys in one side, phone in the other, and then I'm pretty much good to go. I don't really need much else than that. So, you know, in a way you can customize the bag for you too. You know, like you for yourself, okay. Are you driving to Mississauga for, I am. Won't it be cold? No, no, we're going to get a heat bag. We get a heat bag. We take the heat bag with us. I got, I got one of the big ones from Costco. Yep, 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 yep. I got, and, and then we have another one that was gifted to us. Oh my gosh, what? It was one of our very first anniversaries, wasn't it, Pop? The purple one? The purple cooler, cooler hot bag? Oh gosh, we used that forever. Oh my, fish and chips in the UK? Oh, I remember bringing that home on the bike. <laughs> that was fun. Purple bag, bouncing all over the place. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's why I thought if I left it big enough, then that's fine. I can get, you know, get my hand in there. It's fine. I'll be fine with it. Customize the pockets the way you like them, okay? And also, if, if I was thinking, I would have put a, a pocket in the fishy bag. I still might. I still can. Um, like I said, for keys and cell phone, because I don't normally have pockets on me. So, all right, so straight stitch, back stitch at the top to lock those stitches in, and back stitch at the bottom, okay? Straight down. Again, nice decorative stitch. You can be using your walking foot. You could use a nice a colorful complementary thread or contrasting thread. There we go. Now I'm gonna go down each side, including the piping, okay? So you're gonna have to do a little force feeding it with your fingers there a little bit to get over the little lumpy bumpies of the piping. But don't worry, you've got to just take it slow and don't stitch your finger. Okay, now I think switch it around this way. Do the same. Just trying to make this one section, these these like three strips of fabric as one, like as one little unit. So it's easier to sew as we're trying to make it a bigger. There we go. Double stitched over and back stitched over where the piping is, okay? All right, woo, woo, look at us go. Okay, all right, now, do, 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 we got our line. I didn't get my handle fabric. That's what I didn't get. I thought I was gonna use black. Is black okay? I think black would be okay. Okay, so I took out some black. And we wanna make the handles like 24 inches sort of thing. So we're gonna make do two strips. We'll make sure it's long enough. And again, I'm gonna cut it at four inches. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I did. I do follow the pattern. Are you? Are, are you? Well, I don't have any uh, webbing, or uh, most of them was calling for webbing for handles and stuff like that. So I just make my own. You know, if I don't have the supplies. But yes, I do. I do make my own bags. Hence this one right here <laughs> that I did yesterday. <laughs> with two and a half by three and a half inch cuts. <laughs> so great for strips, you know. I saw your uh, grandbabies with their snow. We were talking about that uh, Miss Sass last weekend. <laughs> You're like, I've never seen, I can't believe you've never seen snow. I'd totally share it with you, man. So 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Right? 20, 1, 2, 3, 4. There we go. Perfect handles. Okay. And of course, you could interface these. You could put batting in between. You could do whatever you like for your handles. Okay. Whatever makes them good handles for you. Okay. Perfect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press them in half and then I'm going to aim these two raw edges to go towards the inside like I did for the first set, okay? Or I could use webbing like the pattern says. Oh, jeez, you guys and all your rules. Well, I could stabilize it, but I don't have the webbing. So I've already been there and done down that road. I got bits and bobs. Bobs and bips. Mm. Keep 
all you picky people happy. <laughs> oh, Diane, welcome to the chat. How are you doing? How's it going? I need a chunk for the bottom here. Almost enough for there. what's good for you and what you have on hand like I didn't have the piping so I made my own piping you know or well you know you could make your own piping I did actually happen to find something that would do for the piping so I was a happy camper tiny little strip will do see and that's how frugal I am gosh darn it you call me cheap I call me frugal here, we'll use this and we'll use that to press on top of. Okay, so we get the interfacing nice and secure. I prefer rule breakers, <laughs> rule breakers like rule breakers like me. There you go. Well, there's a lot of like uh, of what I found a little bit of a mystery in this pattern. They kind of just assume, I think, at some point that you know what you're going to be doing and luck chickens figure it out. So when I reread it, the, when I read it the first time around, I thought, oh, yeah, this will be a good fun one. And then as I was reading it the second time around, third time around, I'm like, wait a second here. There's something a little bit funky wonky. So. Not, it doesn't seem like all the instructions are there. Obviously, one was a very easy bag and the other one was intermediate bag. So, like I said, they just assume. They assume you knows. Which you should never assume because you just make a bum out of you and me at that point in time. All right. Okay, now we can fold those in and make a more stable handles than our previously anticipated handles. <laughs> Hello, Pam. Good morning. Relaxed working in the garden. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. All right. I thought Munchkin was going to be running the show today, but he's he's not. So. It's, it's Pop running the show. I guess he's not on camera, no. He said no note to the camera. Okay. Just finger press that. Press it to the center. Press it to the center. See, and I like bags a certain width too, so. Waste not, want not. You bet that, Ray Jean. Waste not, want not. I am very frugal. So do each edge first and then work the center and then the two sections on the side and that should be enough with those five pins to keep your handle in order. Okay, do it again. Fold to the center. I've got a nerve jumping underneath my eye for some reason. Weird. Hate jumpy nerves. <laughs> well, that's a good way to do is make some of these grocery bags. You just need to get the 37 by 14 for the first one, right? And then however you get that with your scraps and a stabilizing fabric or a foundation fabric and you're building up on top of that, you can make some amazingly beautiful bags. And you'd be surprised. You make a few of those and people are going to want them. For one, they're unique. And two, why the heck not? 
Why the heck not? Yeah, definitely. Scrap quilts are so much fun. You betcha. All right, now let's uh, sew out, sew down each handle. We'll just do a nice straight stitch, one on either side, like we did with the the first bag handle. Okay. pretty good. They're a good starter project, especially for people who just want to try a pattern. You know, t a table topper or like a, a um, uh, wall hanging or something like that, you know. Get a little pop of purple. Be a nice little color accent to the handles. And of course, if you did them in a light color, you would know when you needed to wash your bag because the handles would be dark. So We used to take a couple of uh, leftover plastic bags to designate as meat bags that go in the bags themselves. So, you know, like, so it, most, most times they don't need to get, uh, to, to get washed after every uh, grocery shop. under there. Try to make sure things are laid nice and flat. I figured that was kind of what was, was next was some sort of a heart monitor or stress test monitor that he would have to wear. So Okay. Okay, there we go. Just one handle. Two handles. Can you handle it? Can you handle it? Okay. Now, all right. Now I did all that without looking at the destruction. So now I got to flip over to the page because I'm not sure where to go from here besides making the pocket. So let me switch over here for a moment. Okay. Um, the lining the pocket panel. Okay, so I wanted to make two. I wanted to make what is that? six and a half by eleven. Okay, so that's the pocket. All right, so let's put some pins in there. Kind of hoping to make two pockets. I think we'll just do one. One pocket's fine because we've got pockets on the outside. So, okay. And then we're going to leave a space to turn this right side out. Okay. And then we will place it on our inner fabric here. Just assume he's going to have to sit here somewhere. And that is going to be how far down? Say there it says three inches down from the upper raw edge. Okay, so three inches down. Where's my little chalk? Where'd you go, little chalk? Oh, there you are, little chalk, chalk. Little chalk, chalk. Okay, so three. Now let's just put a little line right across here. And then we'll fold it in half so we know what the half is. Perfect. 
and there we go. So there's the half, and there's the line for our pocket. Okay. Warning, innocent. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Okay, we're going to leave a little space in the center here. Just do a little back stitch. And then moving over. Just enough to be able to turn everything right side out. Here, here, innocent while sleeping. I don't know about that, Robin. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible. All right, now we want to clip off these little corners here, okay? Just so things turn around nicer, okay? I'm going to go back to the stream. There we go. Okay. Turn this right side out. Poke out your corners. Okay. Well, thank you, Anonymous. Big hugs. Big hugs. We got we got a nice little um, uh, surprisey for next next weekend. We got we're, we're gonna we're we, well I was getting the the vote from the earlier peoples that were in here first, and they said they really liked the panel. So we're, we're we might just give a few of those away. So come hang out with us during our twelve hours. All right. So now I have a little pin at the top here where it needs to be sewn, but that's going to be my bottom part. So I'm going to make sure that gets down, put at the bottom of where my pocket is. Okay. And I could definitely cut this one in half or stitch this one in half. And that's enough for my cell phone and my keys, but either way, it'll, it'll be okay. I've got pockets on the outside too. So, all right, so let's line it up here. Make sure this is the half is also on the half line. Okay. Put her pin in. Even though we're not stitching across the top here, it's still nice to put one in the top. They're just for stability as you're going around. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a little back stitch up here, come all the way down, pivot, go across here, pivot all the way up here and do some more back stitch because this pocket could be taking a little bit of stress from the weight of a cell phone or keys or a tablet or, you know, a couple of big toys or you, you never know, maybe some, some blocks, maybe some food, who knows? Those, okay, so just give, give it a little, a little extra stability. Okay. Cheers, everybody. I can't believe it's three o'clock. I'm done with tea. Pivot. And of course, we're making sure we're sealing up that bottom of that pocket as we're coming across to seal up the bottom of it to the liner or, or lining. Oops, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oopsies, that's okay. Do a little back stitch. All right, and then again. Just making sure it's nice and sturdy. Okay. Uh oh. Oh, did I run out of thread? Oh, I ran out of thread. Oh, blind sewing. Mm. Sewing in the wind. It's beautiful, isn't it? It was fabric that was gifted to the shop. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say like th probably three years ago, four years ago, from uh, Miss Pat. And I've been wanting to do something with it since, and I just was like, okay, well, you know, so many wall hangings you can do and so many quilts you can do. And I was like, I really, I'm going to make a bag. I'm mean, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a bag out of that material. 
Yeah, air some when you betcha. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it's okay, we love her that way. We love her just the way she is. We love you all just the way you are. Just the way you are. All right, where's my old lady glasses so I can thread this needle? Y'all are blessed and highly favored. Okay, let's finish off the bottom. There we go. <laughs> I don't know if I did or not, Miss Ellie. <laughs> I'm sure glad to see you here today, though. I really am. You were you were highly missed last week. Even James was asking for you. There we go. There's our beautiful pocket. Boot boot. Okay, so I don't know if these are gonna fit the way I want them to, cause they didn't say anything about a bottom piece. Okay, so sew the sides together, but if these... Oh, no, no, that's right, because that has to come down. Okay, okay, okay. Alrighty. Okay, so what we want to do... Oops. We're going to pin this all together. <laughs> We're gonna pin this all together. Hmm. Hopefully, I can get through all this. Glad I didn't choose to line the back of the bags with the he's the double or the one-sided foam. Like it's already thick enough as it is. She been thick. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, we have to fold down after we get to the part. Hold on. It's either before or after. Let me go back here. Do 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 do. Uh, do we get them all sewn together? Matching base size of each of the pocket in place along the top of each main panel. Fold back the raw edge half inch and press. Oh, okay, I have to do that beforehand. Okay, so fold back a half inch and press. And we use, then we go back down. Find the two. Okay, where we are, it's already up there. Following the strip, blah, 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 blah. Uh, two inches? Two and a half inches. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's press over a half an inch. And then we're going to have to flip it over again. Okay. To unpin this. Alright, do do do. <coughs> do do do. <coughs> Sorry, no, oh, jeepers. <coughs> Scoozy. Alright, so let's fold this a half. Give it a press. Probably a little bit more than a half. Oh, <laughs> 
<coughs> Jeepers, I'm sorry. I don't know what set me off. <coughs> Just too excited. Jeepers creepers. <coughs> okay. Now we're supposed to fold this over again. Assuming it's close to that size, I would think. Yeah, okay. <coughs> yeah, Clive's visiting again. <laughs> yeah, that's four. What's four? I'm sorry. I don't need to cough in your ear. I apologize. Do we have to just iron this or are we unfold the raw edge, press, unfold so both crease lines are visible, okay, for using a half inch seam allowance, stitch both sides and across the bottom pivoting at the corners. Our bag is designed to have a three inch box corners to create this width. We figured our corners, <coughs> sorry, one and a half measure mark. Okay, so maybe I'll, I'll just pin this. I don't think I have to, because I think I need to incorporate the lining in this little uh, fold. So I'm just going to pin it and, of course, fold it. Okay. Hello, Steph. Welcome, welcome. Uh, fusible webbing. Hold on. Uh, what did I do with it? Right here. No name. Yeah, it's just, uh, I'd say lightweight to, I'd just say lightweight. It's probably lightweight. Probably medium would be best. It's gluey on this side and then just, uh, interface webbing on that side. Yeah, I don't have a lot of it. I, I, I bought it for uh, t-shirt quilts. Okay. Now, that said, put these two together. possible and then what we'll do is we'll cut our three inch corner out of here of our out of, out of the corner once we get it all stitched up okay but inside the pockets I'm <clears throat> sorry I have what do I have in there I have this um, this foam one-sided glue that's inside the pockets. Okay, that's what's in the, the here. <coughs> Cheapers, creepers, it got it got hot all of a sudden. and get our sides stuck together as much as we can. You have to, Robin. Other than that, it just it gets it gets a little bit overwhelming. It really does. You just gotta start using it. And you figure out a purpose for it, you know? So sorry, my eyeballs are sweating. Hello Julie, welcome, welcome. Hold on, I'm gonna go back over here. Okay, so cut the three inch out of the corner, flatten it up. 
lining on the pocket did that uh, yeah we fold it under make the handles stitch the handles to the inside of the bag outside of the bag like kind of hard to tell from the picture Let's go up to the top and that would be to the outside of the bag okay Okay, where are we? Scroll down. All right, do, 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 do. There to the three inch thingy. There we go. <coughs> okay. Let's do this. So to do a three inch wide bottom, you want to come up, well actually after you stitch, then you want to use your stitch lines as your reference to coming up an inch from, or a half an inch from that, or an inch and a half from that, so on and so forth. Okay. All right, so let's, Let's leave the top a little bit open <clears throat> so we can deal with that. But we know we have to come down the sides. And this is where, because I've got a couple of layers of that thick batting and the uh, piping, you may want to put on a walking foot. I'm just going to try and go a little slow and steady wins the race and help guide it here. So let's, fingers crossed, I don't snap a needle. All right, one. All the way down and pivot. Okay. I was excited to hear that Alberta was coming out of its all restrictions and stuff on Canada Day there, Julie. So I was saying how happy I was for Miss Miss Gwenny that she'd be able to actually have her family in her house instead of camping out in her backyard like she's the local camp club. <laughs> it's the Simpson Camp Club campground. <laughs> family members only. All right, again here we're coming up to the piping, so I'm going to come a little slower and help feed it. Okay, and then a little down from where that is folded over, okay? All right, let's get these guys pins out. <coughs> what was that? A pencil, okay. Well, I need you to come back. Don't go away, pencil. Don't go away. Come here. Okay. Now we take our ruler and we're going to come into the corner here and like I said using our stitch lines we're going to go an inch and a half and an inch and a half. So here one inch plus half, one inch plus half is all resting on our stitch lines and then we're going to come in here with our pencil or marker or anything else like that and we're going to mark it and then we're going to cut that out. Okay, Same on the side. So inch and a half, an inch and a half. Okay. I'm going to take our scissors, cut it out. Okay, and then what we do is we take those two pieces Take those two seams and we squish them right together, flip and flop those seams for uh, security, and then sew on down. Okay. Oh, it's a little steady. Hmm? Who knew? <laughs> I knew I could do it. <laughs> I just don't like to. I don't like being restricted. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I don't like people telling me what to do. That's why I never could go into the military. I don't like bossy pants people. <laughs> I'll tell you if I want to do a sit up. I'll tell you if I want to run somewhere. And I don't. <laughs> 
You can see me being that rebel on the, on the back 40. All right, so all the way across, do a little back stitch at every end. <laughs> I know, they're my favorite. I love box corners too. Very, very favorite. Now, I'm assuming we're going to have to do the same with these oops, these guys here so we can put them on the inside. Okay, so let's get them pinned up and sewn around and boxed out. Pinned up, sewn around and boxed out. Sounds like a song. Oh, yeah, no disrespect for people who serve. <laughs> I actually have all, all the utmost respect for you. <laughs> That you you can you can do that uh, that and, and it doesn't bother you, you know, and that you you work for our you know work to strive to give us the freedom we enjoy today. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to come that come out negative or anything like that. What is the black and gray quilt behind you? That is called um, well it's it's Jacob's ladder is the block. Okay, um, here you can see the block right here, right there. Do do, okay, and then Pop put it in EQ8 software and did some flippy floppy bibbity bobby with it, and came up with a lovely little layout which we call dueling pianos. And there's a piano key on this side, and there's a piano key on that side. So whether you had it as a piano across this way, we call this like the dance floor, or you had it like it was a triangle sort of like a, a like a grand piano, then uh, yeah. Either way, either way it works. Either way. Do, 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 either. Okay, we make sure our pocket is going the right direction, which it is. Okay. I sure can. Just give me, wait, wait, wait one second after I finish this there, James. Would love to show my travel case again from Mr. James. James and Lona. And just sew this liner and I will, I will show it. Thank you very much for my lovely gift. Aw, thank you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. We were working on it and, and someone suggested, oh, we should do a piano keyboarder, which didn't necessarily mean a piano keyboarder, but you know me, I take things literally, and I went and did a piano keyboarder, one for each side, and then it became dueling pianos. And there's lots of musical fabric in that in that uh, in the project itself, so it just it just suits it. There's treble claps and printed music and all sorts of fun stuff. So here, here, and here. Here we go. Put those up there. There's my beautiful case. Hold on. Show, 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 show it. Okay. Is that gorgeous? And if you sent him three fat quarters, he'd make you one too. Look at all my pockets. Look at all those pockets. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Could totally fit a tablet in here, your cell phone in here, all sorts of knickknacks for doing crafts, paper piecing, all sorts of, it's gorgeous, isn't it? It was very nice, James. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, now, oops, pencil out. And again, marking on the one and a halves. Okay, get the ruler right, and your, then your bottoms are the same, you know, got one big bottom and one small bottom. I wouldn't mind a small bottom, but you know, <laughs> can't always get what we want, no can we? Okay, so now we're going to cut that out and do the same thing that we did with the front, or the top, or the outside, whatever you want to call it. Ah, 
Uh, I literally just went and looked up a piano key border, like a piano keys, and then just, uh, I think, I think there was actually something, if you go and search it, I bet you something's going to pop up there, James, because it, it did for me, and it, and it wasn't that hard. I just wish I would have used a, a thicker white fabric. That's the only thing I can suggest, is a thicker white fabric when doing that sort of project, okay? Because the black next to it, you, if you see those threads or it gets tucked under to even just a smidgy, you can see it and it's really annoying. So, okay, folding those seams together to make the three inch wide bottom for our lining. Hello, Sandra. Welcome, welcome. Okay, now we're going to sew across that. And then that's our inside of our bag and the outside of our bag. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I should be able to go like this and this. And then sew this inside of this little lip right here, okay. Okay, all right, I think we're gonna leave that there. We'll finish it off first thing next uh, Saturday, uh, putting the handles on and finishing it up and then completing our beautiful bag. It looks amazing, I'm loving it. Um, the only reason I'm concerned is, is timeline where I got to go and how I got to get there and get back. So, um, but, and I want to make sure Pop is, is happy with his um, Father's Day uh, weekend uh, goodies. So there we go. There's the outside of the bag. And then you saw the inside of the bag. We have handles to attach on the outside, which will go here. And we've got these gorgeous pockets. Oh, I love it. And the yellow brick road right on the bottom. Oh, it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And then we made this other fish bag today. That was the grocery tote, okay? Super easy, great way to bust your fabrics. Even some funky fabric you don't normally like or wouldn't like or something like that, you chop it up, put it in some pieces, piece it up, strips, whatever. You know, you can, you can make something really fun and exciting. So thank you everybody, I appreciate it. So remember, next Saturday, 9 a.m., to 9 p.m. Eastern, come hang out with us. We will share the patterns that we're gonna be working on on the Guild website. I'll try and get that done either tonight or first thing tomorrow. Uh, so everybody has a chance to prep, get your fabrics cut, come sew along with me, come cut, make a mess. Munchkin and I will be cooking in the kitchen. We'll make our Pop and I's anniversary cake because Canada Day, July 1st, will Pop and I will be married for 26 years. So. Thank you, thank you, yes, exclamation bag. Thank you, Pauline, if you want to come and sew along. Uh, there's 10 patterns there to choose from, all free, and uh, they're really quite cute. Really quite cute. <laughs> yes, have a great weekend, everybody. Big hugs to you. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, sorry, I just the timeline just is not going to make it possible for me to finish this. It's still going to probably take me half an hour, 40 minutes to finish. So, but we'll do that first thing on Saturday morning. We'll get finished on that, and then we'll start working on our other projects. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Big hugs to you. We'll see you real soon. Thank you.